In this video, I'm going to show you how you can upload your sample e-learning projects to the internet. Okay, so in this video, and I, I've done versions of this video before, but this is the most up-to-date as of August 2022. Um, essentially what the challenge is that some people have is that they want to create a portfolio of their work or they want to share a sample of their work with a potential client, whatever the case might be. But the challenge is, is that if you have, say, a Wix website or a Squarespace website, you can only upload a single file. You can't upload an entire course, which is made up of many folders and files. So I'm going to show you today how you can use uh, the S3 service from Amazon's web services division to uh, upload your entire course and make it available either on your website or provide uh, via a link to a client via email. So let's get started here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to take a project and publish it as a web page, essentially. So I'm going to use the sample project that I've prepared for the upcoming DevLearn conference in Las Vegas. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the publish icon and publish to computer. Now, a couple things that you can do uh, or you should do is make sure you uncheck zip files. In this case here, we're not uploading to a learning management system, so we don't need to zip files up. And on a related note, we want to make sure that our e-learning output is disabled because again, there's going to be no reporting for this course. It's just a sample of your e-learning project. So I'm going to call this test just for our purposes here today. And I'm going to go ahead and press publish. It's a very simple project, so it won't take very long to do. So I'm going to go ahead and click on no, I don't wish to view the output and I can now close Adobe Captivate. I'm finished with that. Similar procedures would work for other authoring tools as well. So perhaps you're using Storyline or even Articulate Rise or Toolbook. As long as you can publish to a basic HTML folder, which is what I've done right here, uh, you're pretty much good to go. Okay, so we're going to first of all create a new AWS account, Amazon Web Services account, and I'll provide a link for this in the description of the video here. Now, for those that are concerned that, of course, the S3 service only includes 12 months of free usage, uh, I do want to show you the latest invoice that I got, a screen capture from the latest invoice. As you can see, uh, it, I'm going to be charged 18 cents for the total usage for the last, uh, I don't know if it's 90 days or 30 days, but either way, it's completely inconsequential. Now, of course, if you, if you share the links to your uh, web projects, your e-learning projects with thousands or tens of thousands of people, this number is going to go up. But if you're just sharing it with one or two people, you know, in pursuit of a, uh, a job application or uh, trying to gain a new client, for example, if you're freelance like me, uh, this will be very affordable even beyond the 12 months for free. So let's go ahead and uh, use, an, you know, one of my spare email uh, addresses that I can use here. We'll type all that out and we'll call this Paul Wilson and we'll verify that email address. So I will have received a verification code. Let me just use my phone to confirm. Yep. So I'm just going to type in the confirmation code and we'll click on verify. And now I need to create a password for this here. So I'm just going to type in something that I know I'll remember and we'll continue to step one of five. And uh, I'm going to select um, personal for my own projects. I'm going to type in my full name and I need to provide a phone number and I'm in Canada. So let's find the, the extension for that. And I'm just going to put my phone number in. And again, we'll select Canada and my address.
and agree to the terms and conditions. Continue to step two of five. Now I do need to provide a credit card for this and I will use the credit card that's on file with my Microsoft account. And I guess I need to include the um, expiry details here. And now I'll move on to step three of five. Further verification is obviously required. They're very careful about this and I appreciate that. So let me put my mobile number in and I'll use the I'm not a robot numbers here. Hope I get this right. Sometimes I don't get it right. And uh, I should be receiving a code on my computer, which I'll enter now. Perfect. So I'm going to choose the basic support, which is free. I'm going to complete the sign up here. And now I'm going to go to my AWS management console. So I'm going to enter in the email address that I supplied earlier. Click next. And the password is the password and we'll sign it. So finally, <laughs> now in this case here, we're working with the S3 account. So I'm going to click on S3 and this will take me to this section of Amazon S3. First thing you need to do is create a bucket. Buckets are kind of like folders, but they're at the top level. And this is where all your content will go. And the reason you might want to use a, a bucket instead of um, you know, just putting everything anywhere. You can have different buckets for different purposes. Uh, one bucket is usually sufficient for the type of thing that, um, that you're going to be uploading with an e-learning course. Now the bucket name needs to be completely unique. So you can't just type in your name because there's a very good possibility that someone's already used that. So I'm going to type in, um, let's do this. Captivate Teacher 2022. Uh, the AWS region, this is specific to the server where you will be uploading to. And uh, in this case here, US East is fine for me. And choose the ACLS disabled, which is recommended. And in this case here, I'm going to block, uncheck block all public access and allow the access to the folders that will be set up in this uh, to be available to the general public on the internet. So I'm acknowledging that the current settings might result in this bucket and objects becoming public. And that's fine. I'm going to go with all of the default choices here and go ahead and create my bucket. Now, as you can see, objects can be public. Uh, we're going to, first of all, um, click on my bucket here and we're going to go to permissions. Now we're going to change objects can be public to um, actually public. So we're going to edit this and save the changes. And I'm just going to type in confirm and press confirm. Now you need to add a bucket policy and this is the part that makes it truly available to those on the internet. So I have this policy here and essentially all you need to do is copy this and I'll provide you uh, this in the description below and we're going to edit our bucket policy and I'm going to paste this in and what I need to do is replace these number signs with the name of my bucket. Captivate Teacher 2022. Oops, one too many um, 2022s there. So I'm going to save those changes. And now, of course, we can see that my Captivate Teacher 2022 bucket is publicly accessible. Let's go back to buckets for a second here and click on Captivate Teacher 2022. I don't have any objects currently available, but let's just resize this and we will take my test folder, which is a published Captivate project, and we will drag it over to this view here. And you'll see, of course, uh, all the items that are going to be uploaded to this. We'll click on upload 
and this will just take a moment or two. Okay, so that's complete. We can go ahead and close this um, area here and this will take us down and within our Captivate Teacher folder or bucket, we have a folder called test. And if we open that up, we can see the entire structure of what we've uploaded from our published Adobe Captivate project. If I click on the index.html file, which is common to all of these, this will provide you a link to your course. So if I click on this, it will open up in a new tab or new window and we'll be able to preview this course and see it in, in all its glory. And of course, you can now take this hyperlink up here and share it with your stakeholders, share it with your potential learning and development managers who might be hiring you or just your clients if you're a freelancer like myself. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.